I'm going to jail because my boss eats people. What can I say? I'm the employee of a horrifying shape-shifting monster, but it's just the way it is and there's nothing we can do about it. And it was all working fine until Sharon was eaten. Sharon was too obvious and now the whole cover-up will be blown. You'll hear it in the news, so I might as well tell you now. Yeah, we knew Dwayne was a monster, like a real one. We think he might have come from space, but it doesn't really matter now. He would eat customers, that much is true. For the most part, only old elderly ones that came alone at night. But those weren't the ones we were worried about. It was the high-risk customers, once every four months or so, that we had to be vigilant about. It always happened around his own system of holidays. What were his holidays? Well, let me explain. June 7th, Stomp Day. Stomp Day was Stomp Day. You arrived at 8 a.m. sharp and were paid a lot of money to stay for the next 14 hours, instead of 8. At about a dozen different times throughout the day, you'd stomp the ground as hard as you could. The idea was to hide it. Like, sorry I was carrying this big load of plywood and so I accidentally stomped as I almost lost balance. Or you could just stomp on a pallet jack to prevent swerving. You'd be surprised at how many discreet ways you can stomp right by a person's face and get away with it. The purpose of the stomping was to make customers flinch, which had something to do with building up a certain level of unease in the store. At the end of the day, the employee who could get the most flinches was awarded three months' pay and an all-black Rubik's Cube. I'll get to that later. The hardest part was that you were competing with everyone else, and you were only allotted seven tries at specific timestamps in the day or time stomps as we called them. Everyone's time stomps were different. Mine were 821, 9 o'clock, 1037, 1140, 2132, 2133, 2134. It was easiest just to set alarms on your phone. I always brought a spare battery for my dying iPhone 10. Anyway, if you could get someone really startled, Dwayne would show up and be very apologetic and tell the customer they can get a free DeWalt power drill from the back. He would take them into the loading bay, and into that room none of us were allowed in. You'll see it on the news. And then, well, the customer would be gone forever. But trust me, no one noticed. It's why we were able to get away with it for so long. Dwayne had some intuitive way of choosing single, fairly antisocial people, usually homeowners. So when they disappeared, it took a while for friends and family to catch on, and the police never had any leads. October 14th, St. Quelber's cleaning day. Before you go asking who St. Quelber is, we have no fucking clue. I should explain that Dwayne definitely does not speak English as his first language. I'd love to get some linguist or geneticist to tell me where he could possibly be from. Apparently Quelber is some priest, an angel, maybe Duane's mother. For whatever reason, Duane settled on the name Saint Quelber, and we just rolled with it. There wasn't any hard start to this holiday, you could book any kind of six or eight hour shift, but if you were working on Saint Quelbers, you'd better bring a bandana or N95 mask. Dwayne would basically fumigate the entire store with some chemical I can only describe as minty bleach. We would put up signs throughout the store that said we are having a cleaning day. Customers seemed to put up with it. Everyone just grabbed a courtesy COVID mask from the front and did their shopping as usual. But the closer you got to the back of the store, the stronger that minty bleach smell got. I should mention it wasn't like a hazy smoke or anything, it was completely translucent. More of a mist. If you were working on this day, you had to carry a rag in your back pocket and clean any stains you spotted on the floor or shelves. The substance in the air basically made any stain come out instantly. Yeah, I hated to think what it might have done to my eyes and skin, but I never had any adverse reactions. Thank God. Inevitably, some customer with asthma or a cold or something would have a coughing fit and start spewing up phlegm. If the customer met Duane's criteria, he would graciously offer them the employee washroom in the back where they could go clean themselves up. And then, yep, you guessed it, he would eat them. But listen, we knew he ate people, I'm not pretending we didn't. We're definitely guilty of that. We just never directly killed anyone ourselves. We were at worst, accessories to murder, or coerced into compliance. In fact, I know it seems like we only enabled his behavior, which is true. But we were kind of forced to play along. It'll make more sense when I explain the next holiday. March 24th, Annual Graduation. If you want to work at Duane's Depot, you have to sign a year-long contract. It was very explicit. Duane always explained to new employees that he's sick of high turnover, so he would guarantee you a customer service job, fairly well-paying, as long as you committed to a year. 
Obviously, the law states you can give your two weeks notice at any job and leave, but Dwayne makes you sign an incredibly sophisticated contract that supposedly circumvents this law. As you'd imagine, this deters a lot of people, which is totally fine. Dwayne only seeks the committed. And so he filters out applicants until he gets someone who is desperate for a stable, decent paying job with little experience. E.g. High school dropouts like me. Anyway, after a year of work, you are allowed to quit, but only on graduation day, which is generally 365 days after you started. On your graduation, Dwayne invites all the employees into the loading bay, and he sings you a song which is unlike anything you've ever heard, and is genuinely impossible to describe. Afterwards, he gives you a white rubber band with a certain number of tally marks, which I think corresponds to how many people you helped to meet that year. And then you can either move on with your life, keep working part-time at Dwayne's, or commit to another full year with a triple wage increase. We all told Sharon to wait. Just hold out until her graduation on March 27th. Once she got her first white rubber band, she could leave. I'll admit to that in court. Listen, I'm being super upfront about all of this. But she couldn't. She was a week away from her graduation when she snapped. Apparently she had snuck into Duane's room and saw something. Probably the eating process. On the day of her meltdown, I was at the opposite end of the depot when she grabbed a megaphone, which we sell in aisle 30 for about $1.80. I heard the buzzy click of the megaphone turning on, and then I heard Sharon's hysterical shouts. We work for a monster. People have died here. Etc. Etc. I rushed over to shut her up, of course, as did two other employees, but she refused to be subdued. Very soon, Dwayne showed up, wiping his mouth and demanding to know what was going on. She tossed the megaphone at him and ran. And so, Dwayne chased her into the parking lot, the open-air customer parking lot in broad daylight, in front of like 20 people. Dwayne caught her by the hair and shrieked an unfathomable sound, like a space lion roar or something. He pulled one of those black Rubik's cubes out from his pocket and basically like... Sucked Sharon into it. Customers freaked out. Cars sped away. It was a fucking scene. We all stared with our jaws dropped, not knowing what to do. Wayne just stared back and said, What are you looking at? Get back to work. The reason I think that Sharon was eaten was because the black cubes were how Dwayne stored his prey. And yes, before you ask, I do have two of them. They were awarded to me on some very successful stomp days. No, I have not opened them. I have no clue how they work. And yes, I will be giving them to the police. Honestly, it may not sound like my hands were tied, but my hands were tied. Where else was I supposed to work? I don't have a degree, and don't qualify for anything in finance, STEM, healthcare, or whatever. I applied to every other place in my neighborhood. I could only land a job at Duane's. Obviously, I should go to jail, and I will. But I can't possibly deserve more than 18 months. Like two years tops with good behavior. Thanks to Duane, I've been able to afford the crazy high rent in this city, pay for food, and now I have enough to pay for school too. I'm just writing this all out here so you can see my side of the story, before the news media spins everything out of control. Anyway, please DM me if you know a good lawyer. After this all blows over, I'm going to medical school with a goal to save at least 254 lives. 254 because that's how many tally marks I counted on my white rubber bands. Peace and love, y'all. Monique K.